Seek and use godly counsel. Seek for godly counsel and use godly counsel. Seek counsels that are coming from people who are endowed with wisdom of God. People that you know that this person has sense, not just anybody. Seek and use godly counsel. There are kind of people or persons God has gifted with certain kind of wisdom concerning mysteries of every aspect of life. That means that somebody you can meet and the person will break down your kind of work that you do for the last 10 years and you're wondering, how come I don't know about this, this, this work? And the person may not be necessarily in your department or your kind of work, but they have just been gifted by God with the wisdom to handle such things. So make sure that the person that you're complaining to, if you must talk to somebody else apart from your husband, make sure the person has a godly wisdom. Make sure it's not just anybody that you want to talk to. Praise God. The next one you see is James 3.15. The book of James chapter 3 verse 15. How do we seek godly wisdom? What is this godly wisdom? James 3.15 says, This wisdom does not descend. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly and sensual. No. What I'm trying to say here is if you go up again, you will say, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his words are done in the meekness of wisdom. 14. But if you have any bitter envy and self-seeking in your heart, do not boast and lie against the truth. 15. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. Now, two different kinds of wisdom. Remember that some people you will seek advice from, and they may give you advice because it's advice. But the advice they give you may not be godly advice. It may not be wisdom from above. There are different kinds of wisdom like we have learned in this ministry. So there is wisdom that descends from above and there is one that is earthly and sensual. How do you know an earthly wisdom? How do you know a wisdom that is sensual, that is demonic? Such wisdom will only tear down and break down. It cannot build. Somebody called me on the phone from Lagos and said, look, I want to leave my husband because his people are beating me. They are molesting me. I'm too young to be in this marriage before I die before my time. You see, my sister said, oh, my husband, come and say, let's go to go and make peace that I should not go. Ah. I said, is that what your sister said? I said, yes. And I asked her, does your sister want your husband to beat you on the spot till you die? <laughs> you already have problem. And your sister is telling you to be stubborn to your husband. And you want to be stubborn to your husband. You cannot, you cannot do that. If you can't come and tell me that now. Is that what you're supposed to do? I said, no. If your husband says, let's go, you go with him. And hear him out first. You will not say your sister who is not in your marriage, in her own husband's house, tells you when your husband come and say, come, let's make peace. You don't go. Praise God. So there's some wisdom that are called earthly wisdom. Now, a way to know earthly wisdom is sometimes they are sensual. How do we know earthly wisdom? Earthly wisdom always use feeling. You react to things based on how you feel. You judge matters based on how it makes you feel. If you don't feel, if it doesn't move your body, don't think um, it's right for you. Because if it's moving your body, that's why it should be right for you. Those are sensual wisdom. And there's no one in the Bible who took any form of sensual wisdom that got but, uh, good results. They all crashed from taking such wisdom. First person we'll look at is um, Adam and Eve. Sensual wisdom. It was sensual wisdom that made Eve fall for Satan, the serpent. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. It says, So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, the woman here is Eve. From the beginning of the tree, it says, the Satan came to her, the serpent came to her in a cunning manner and told her how she should eat the fruit. So that six says, when she saw that the fruit that Satan was giving to her was good for food, she only looked at it, it was good. And it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise. You see, everything that was described here by the word of God shows us that she was working with her sexual feeling and her eyes. When you look at a beautiful woman, you think that that woman is good for you because she's beautiful. It's until you fall into the laps of Delilah. 
So sometimes the things that you see that appear good to your eyes, that appears desirable to you, may not be the best approach or the best thing for you. Praise God. So here she said, the people said, the tree is able to make one wise. She took off its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. Praise God. So it was, her decision was based on earthly wisdom, sensual wisdom, demonic wisdom sponsored by Satan himself. So that Satan, that serpent that brought that, that idea, it's already demonic enough. It's just demonic manipulation in the wisdom. So it was demonic wisdom. And he imputed in her, look, my dear, go and look at it. You will like it. And so she looked at it and used all her sensual organs and to judge the fruit, and she thought it was good for her. Another person that we may look at again to know that when you want to judge matters, whether it's in your home or relationship, you will know that judging is by sexual feeling does not work. The next person to look at is Samson. Samson was judging what Delilah was saying based on sensual wisdom. She knew how to play her cards. She knew how to cry how to manipulate him. And that was why when he was talking to her about telling her, his, telling her his powers, he was not going to fall until the Bible says in the book of Judges 16, verse 15 to 17, I'll read. He said, then she said to him, how can you say I love you when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me these three times and have not told me where your, your great strength lies. And it came to pass when she pestered him daily with her words and pressed him so that his soul was vexed to death, that he told her all his heart and said to her, No razor has ever come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If I am shaving, then my strength will leave me, and I shall become weak and be like other men. When Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called the Lord of the Philistines, saying, Come at once upon him. For he has told me all his heart. So the laws of the, of the Philistines came up to her and brought the money in their hand. Praise God. You see, if he was not looking at the thing he shared with Delilah, he wouldn't have fallen to her. He wouldn't have told her what he shouldn't have told her. Because he knew he was not supposed to tell her. But he, she pestered him. And the wisdom he, he had available to him to use was wisdom that was demonic. It was a sensual wisdom. He looked at her and thought, ah, let her my girlfriend or my wife or something. Ah, since I love her, let me tell her my secret. But that was a mistake. So most times it's always wrong to use sensual wisdom, to use earthly wisdom, demonic wisdom to judge matters, especially when it is in conflict times, when it's to settle things and make peace. You will never get a good result.